my beloved sisters and brothers, I'm standing today just to share my testimonial story. It's a miracle. And everything he did it. I would like to read Second Peter. Second Peter. First chapter. have obtained like a precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace multiplied into you through the knowledge of God. According as his divine power have given into us all things that pertain into life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given into us exceeding great and precious promises that by these year might be partaker of divine nature partaker of divine nature having accepted the corruption that the world through lost and beside this giving all diligent added to our faith, virtue, and virtue, knowledge, actually 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligent to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Brothers and sisters, what he went through those virtues and things, but that is given. But we have responsibility. In 10, give diligence. It's our responsibility to, to make sure the calling and the election. The call, who did the call, calling? Who did their collection? Make sure by, if you do these things and shall never fall. My testimony, let's start. The Lord says in John, nobody come to me unless being driven or called by the father. And then I go to other things. We've been elected or been before the creation of chosen, chosen before the election or before the, the foundation. foundation of the world. So nobody come to me unless the father bring him to me. And the father, the moment you show, the father, his way deal with the, with the world, 
we see it every day up to now. I mean, just example, when you see this tsunami and all this great power, anybody ask himself, who's behind this? What is it? Then what's the message? Same, each individual go through difficulties or something. Did he ask himself, Lord, what was what try to tell me? Because Saul in his way in Damascus, first thing he say, what do you want me to do? So God has way to approach people, but it need the people figure out or touch or desire to know the truth. I walk through my life and I want to, my education, my learning, to the point, the last final exam, it's open book at the night and I'm doing biochemistry, a high degree in University of Arkansas and Illinois in England and uh, uh, Newcastle. So that moment, there is something so difficult. So I just, I am, my background, are born and risen as Muslim. And God to us is dark, mysterious power, and we don't know who's he and only some mysterious. That moment when I had difficulty, just I thought, Ya Allah. And it seems to me something went easy and I figured out. And right away, this path in the this pathway of the glucose in the liver, I am, I did it, I created. Who is now? I want to know that. Who is this creator? All these years of my study, there's a creator. There is somebody behind all this. Let me question. I want to know now the real God, the true God, the living God. Just in my mind, since then, I make long story short and still in my mind, who are you? Then suddenly here in, in Canada, I went through very, very difficult family matter. And the friend of mine, he is Catholic, took me to house and in Hamilton and here is, they are praying. And I hear Jesus Christ. All the people on they have a burden, come to me. And I'm really touch me that word, and there we are praying. And I was really involved, start to cry. I came home and I say, Are you the one? I hear your name, Jesus. I never, I don't know who's, I mean, in our religion, in our style of life, Jesus is. So I say, are you the one? Tell me. And with the kind of feeling then, I went to sleep. I don't know, five, 10 minutes, 15, 24 hour. Hair is on top of me. I've been in Catholic church. I saw his photos and his pictures, nice blonde young and, but that came to me with white, with white cover, white beard. And he's on top of me and I'm trying to rise him. And I say, who are you? Jesus Christ. That moment, within a second, I wake up. And to me, it's just not just a dream. It's like a shock. Just I before I went to bed, I say, are you the one? I've been looking, looking for the real God, living God, true God. 
And he, are you, just to me, it was just saying, it's, it's enough to know. And the people in, uh, and they say, read John. So my desire to know what that dream or message, I want to join. The beginning, there is a world. The world was with God. And the world was God. Then I went through it. We were talking with the brother. Nicodemus confused me more. Now, how I get born, how I grow in my Lord Jesus didn't. He said the wind kind of blow everywhere and you don't know what's coming from, but then I went through it till I reach 17. The Lord prayers explain everything. The, the time has come to glorify you. I I don't want to take them, but I pray for them and not for those, the people who are going to believe what they're going to tell them about me. I went through it and I said, Lord, that's it. My life is very well settled and my questioning and wondering, it's answered. You are the one who I've been seeking looking for the true living God. But I find out he was looking for me. Yes, I'm looking for, but he was looking for me. Everything is for us. Now, that's what I read in Peter. Now, born again in spirit, All the change, don't expect, I'm, get, I'm gonna, it's, he worked through the divine beam power and changing you, everything to a new born, a new life, a new person. And you find the living with him every minute, every second. And your spiritual growth, you're growing, you feel it. It's your life, it's him, and him, it's you. And I start to feel like I'm a fish in the water. I can't live without him. Any second of my life, it's so depending or so correlated with him. It's a spiritual. And you start to see things and you start to understand things. People don't understand it, don't see it. And the, how I guess from my family, all the family in Iraq, they insult me and they are very, very vicious because I left where I was before. And then when I start, they still now, no any opportunity on the phone, they start to call me and attack me. But you listen to them, they are, they don't know exactly, they don't know what they're talking about. And forgive them. The word of love your enemy. How many people I was talking previously in, in uh, ritual churches, oh, that's difficult, need to be practiced. When the Lord spiritually inside you and you, the Holy Spirit in you. And he came with his love to save the sinners. The sinners is like his enemies, nothing to do. And he came to save him because he loved them and his love to save the sinner. And he went to that shameful cross because of his love. 
So when his love went inside me, you start to feel my family when they insult me and they attack me, I don't have any feeling toward them if I am a human and the way they talk to me, you, you build up, you feel you want to answer and you want to attack them. Say, no, you start to feel sorry for them. Forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. My brother, when he called me, or my cousin, he called me and said, you, you left your, that, and you went, and they start to say things you feel, they don't know what they're talking about. I am in different world. You feel the work of Holy Spirit in you. You start to see complete, you start to see the things different. You open your eyes first time, you see the people just like trees. And then you start to, trees moving, which is not moving, but then you start to see the, the people real. You start to see the life. So the Holy Spirit in each one of us make a big difference. And to love your enemy is not questionable. And the Lord, when he say love your enemy, he didn't want to make something impossible. No, it is. If the Holy Spirit in you, you start to love his love, not your love. So his love well understood. He loved his. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is my short view, but the changing in my life and the changing of my way of start to see the things and live things, it is completely, you feel it every second and you start to live in it. And as I say, uh, Prayer 24 7, talking to him 24 7. In any minute, in any second, driving all the way to that is the most beautiful meditation. And you, how many times I miss the exit to Highbury, I go to Wellington, then I find out, then I turn back. It's just you are completely occupied, enjoyable then it's time and costly. And I say, well, I'm gonna tell Brother Hakimit I'm not coming anymore or something and I just use, then while I'm, when I came and I enjoy the time with him, I say, no, it's worth the time with the Lord. The mutation with him is worth everything. And let me enjoy it. The living with him, I mean, Meditation with him, it's most, anything you, I come through the difficulty, well, what, I know that prayers is not gonna change his will, but there is a reason. He allowed it, he allowed this to happen. All what I need to say, Lord, I ask you, what you try to tell me? What's your message? And what you want me to do? Saul, what you want me to do? He lost his sight and he, and he was very well prepared. He prepared from the day he was standing in his Stevenson when he was stoned. And he was standing there next, next to the cross because he is Jewish religion man. He started to think, what, 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 am I exactly my, am I following right God or his, what his God? And Stevenson, he just show his master smiling, forgive them. And so I'm watching, what is, I'm all this knowledge, I am the Jewish religion man. 
And what's this, what's this God? Because when, the, when he, he, he went in Damascus way and to that straight way, and the Lord said to Hanania, Hanania, go to this man and pray with him and baptize him. She says, what? This man? He's a killer. He is, he says, what the Lord answer? He's praying and he is, uh, he is mine and he is praying. So he's praying from the day first with Stevenson, who's the real God. So the, what I'm saying, what the God, how he touched me, he touched many people every day, every minute, but we are, they are arrogant, ignorant. Nobody think about. As I give example, tsunami went, is anybody ask? Anybody sit down and say, what's all this about? Or anything in his life? He is just, well, I'm going to pray or go to the priest to pray in the church or whatever, whatever. But never, ever say, is that message to me? And we are praying to change this, uh, to make it better. No. The Lord allowed it. And it happened. I want to approach you, but the moment you just ask, you want the truth? Okay. Nobody come to me unless being to, uh, taken by the Father. And second thing, the most important, nothing, you, without me, you can do nothing. So if we, leave, if we reach this point, we know that we do, we, uh, without him, we can do nothing. Brother and sister, I don't want to take more time, and it is less, most, and I don't know how to say the experience to know the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit in you, guide you, live with you, and live for the day. He promised He's coming. He's coming to make sure he come to the cloud. He come to make sure we take us. So we wait for that moment because you live with him every second and you feel the, the pleasure, the enjoyment. So you look forward. And the believer who has the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit he is with him already. He, uh, we are with him. Till the day to be with him. So we are with him. God bless you. Uh, thank you for listening. And sharing the feeling I have with the Lord Jesus.